Um, the contract, now does the state get involved and set the guidelines for that or is that up to the town or the regions? That is up to the district and the regions. It's up to the municipalities if you're in a local district. And you have to, you know, look at many factors. Arbitration, if you wanted to go that route, for example, it's going to cost you thirty to $40,000. What are you necessarily going to win? We had a very good working process with teachers. It was a fair contract this year. And again, there's premium increases for insurance. There's reasonable cost increases. And what we've been able to do is get more competitive on the lower side of our salaries. We were... You know, just using Litchfield as a, a variable, the old contract was six or seven thousand dollars starting first step below our neighboring districts. But since we're not hiring new right now, because we're not in the hiring phase, that's okay. What is the bargaining unit? Is this statewide or is it? No, nope. that's different bargaining units every single district in the state. Um, this is the, this, this, this is local one is uh, the Wamogo Educators Association. They are a member of the CEA, which is the Connecticut Education Association. But it's in the benefits that it went from. They change district to district. <clears throat> they but change by negotiation? everything. And who's the prime negotiator? Board negotiates with myself, reviewed by lawyers. I mean, it's. And that's every year? No, every three years. There's three year contracts. So you have three year contracts? <clears throat> Correct. <clears throat> yep. And again, they will differ. You can. So what sell. are you into now? What are you talking We will be going into year one. This is year three. We're going into year one of a new contract. So this is a negotiation. We just finished. Yeah, we finished a negotiation in the fall. Oh, we already finished. Yep, finished negotiation in the fall. We will go into the coming contract. Um, if you look at just for an example, Litchfield Education Association, right next door to us, also a member of the CEA, has a different benefit package. Um, what was the vote? What was the vote? What do you mean? Contract was brought to vote to the members. The, to the members, the teachers. I don't get the teacher member vote. I don't ask. That's very general. They approved it, um, but I don't have that in numbers. And do they all go to different insurance groups? I mean, Aetna or, or something. I mean, wouldn't it be so wise to get all together? We're, and we're, we're actually fortunate. We can actually look at different carriers, um, but it has to be comparable. So we couldn't switch to a provider that didn't offer similar service. And that's standard language. Depending on other contracts, I've seen contracts that say you must carry Anthem. It was written in during the 70s when it was Blue Cross Blue Shield Anthem, then it became Anthem. It's actually written in there. That has to be the provider. So different districts, different areas, do it completely different. Wouldn't it be wise to all group together and go after one carrier? Problem isn't um, one carrier or one pool. It's that benefit. the benefit and the terms of the benefits are different. So you know, right now we're looking in our collaboration, what can we do with Litchfield, for example, because they're right next door. In just preliminary looks, I'm not seeing the matches yet that make sense to us. But we'll see. And then that's part of it. That everybody has some different you know, package. Some people still have point of service. We have an HSA health savings account. Some people have PPOs. So, you know, there's so many different plans out there. Not only you run a school district, you need you know, to have all your insurance language done too. But there's no easy way just to mix and match. And that's part of what's been done over the years when it's negotiated. Because if we're all able to line up a plan together, what can we do? Consolidate and be able to, you know, share and pool. We don't even fit into the state plan and the state pool. Because we'd have to change our plan. And if we changed our plan and the provisions of our plan, <coughs> that's subject to collective bargaining. You just can't change people's benefits. Contract of services. This is going to be a different look for many people who've been around the district in the district budget book. And I'll walk you through some examples. So back in 2016, we budgeted for testing and evaluation at the elementary and high school level, $8,000. We spent just around $11,000. Budget eight, spend eleven. dollars Keep it in the back of your head for a second. The next year we came back and budgeted <coughs> 10. We spent right around 9. Makes sense, right? Because you got declining enrollment, you have less kids taking the test. This year, the district came back at 11. Declining enrollment, but we went up. We're not going to spend 11 in that category. 
Next year, we already contacted the provider. We'll spend $6,500. Stop the separation of accounts. Try to end some of the confusion and get to some real numbers in here. Where else do we see this? I'll go to, I'm going to walk you through one. Instructional repairs at the elementary level. Budget 428, spend 35. Budget 450, spend 252. This year we came out with budget 450 again. We know roughly we're going to spend around $1,850 in instructional repairs and equipment at the elementary level. We know piano tuning is going to be 375. <coughs> we did in this budget is try to stop some of the confusion. Also tried to clean up some accounts that didn't make sense. Why is transportation not in transportation but in learning programs? Running for transportation. Teaching supplies. I'll go right to Morris. So this is just where it gets awfully messy. So Morris, general support. Where are we? Right there. Eighty eight hundred budgeted and sixteen spent ten six. Okay, we need some more, we'd say. Come back the next year, spend ninety five hundred. Our budget 9500 spent 6700 And you're going to start to see a trend where money wasn't getting to the teachers or the kids. So, oh, science. Everybody believes science is important in 2018? We can agree on that one line item for a second. Mm -hmm. Budget 1427 spent 162 Whoa. Whoa. Budget 1500 spent 1040 but here's the kicker. We haven't spent the budget in the last two years, and this year we came back and we upped it to $1,750 for good measure. And it's like that every one of the sites. We'll go to the logo for one second, just because I love these two accounts. Anybody have high school students here? Grandchildren in high school? All right, good. You'll like this. Teaching supplies. $21,500, spend $13,474. What's that difference of? Eight grand. Bigger than a lot of people's property the tax bill. 315.59. So we came back this year with 25. In the last two previous years, we left 8 and 16, $24,000. That was designated for teaching supplies. Teacher. We never made it there. You're going to ask the question, where did it go? I'll get there in a second. Just right, so that's a fun one. Wait, wait, wait. You've got to wait for that. Don't ruin the farm. Sure. Yeah. Oh, we hold it. Wait, wait. Teaching supplies, general support. Just general money. 11 4 spend 2100 11 spend 1498 Constantine. So we looked at what the per pupil and the averages were. In Morris next year, we will spend... $17,000 in teaching supplies and instructional supplies. That's the number. That is earmarked for the principals and the teachers. So instead of having it split out your new in one lump. Some of this data is two years old. Why are we yeah. looking in the rearview mirror? Aren't there quarterly budget reviews with, with these? I, I, welcome, I, I welcome you to come to any one of our board meetings anytime, sir. Well, we do that. Meeting. I don't know what board meetings we, are going to help. It's really a budget review. We, with the so we do that now. Um, I wasn't here then. So, so, I mean, I don't know why nice a year later saying we, we way underspent or way overspent. The fact that you should know that in year. You should know what's going on. I so, I, I, I actually do. And I got I'm here in, just, I got mean, in July. I don't mean you. I mean, who's ever responsible for this budget? You can't sit here, you know, look in the rear view mirror. You've got to be more on this stuff. Well, I think that's part of the problem. I don't think it sounds like somebody was responsible for this budget. Thank I'm you. Trying to fix that. All right. Trying to we got to see where we're coming from to go to where we need to go. Really, what I'm hearing, and I've been here a long time, is that no one's been paying attention to this money, and well, that the money has not been being given to the children possible? or students. Let's take the town of Morris. Just seventeen thousand dollars you're going to spend next year in supplies. Who's primarily responsible for that? So, in the is past, if you were letting me finish, in the past, it all came out of the central office district office. And I was going to get to the column that showed it in a second. Mm -hmm. Now, the responsibility of what I said is teachers and principal, school-based. When I got here, administrators didn't know their codes to their budget <coughs> account. That is not a fault of their own. They hadn't been trained. 
and I look at that as you know, unfortunate because what was happening is stuff wasn't getting where it was supposed to. So to the question you were asking, where is it, where is it going? Let's go to my favorite line. Where is it? For those who were here last night, I apologize. Professional development. There we go. Professional development. There it is. Can I get a volunteer? Because it's more fun if somebody else reads it. So you're good in vision. How much did we budget last year? We're not going two years back. I'm blind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, you spent forty thousand. No, how so much you budgeted? How much has been budgeted? We budgeted forty thousand yes. dollars. What do we spend? You spent a hundred thousand. District spent a hundred thousand dollars in professional development. How do you spend a hundred thousand when you have forty in no budget? To the point of the gentleman back there, we weren't doing quarterly reports. We didn't have dual signatures on purchase orders. Um, we overspent this past year coming into this year, and we're stopping. That's what I'm getting to. So, so just so really, what you're saying is that I think is that people weren't paying attention to the lines and they were just balancing to the overall number. And if you had to shuffle a little over here to take care of that line right. and you took it out of there, yeah. oh well, so bad. And so I don't understand why there hasn't been more transparency, but it's pretty egregious what you're telling us right now. I mean, it really is. But here's a good point because somebody <coughs> asked last night, well, yeah, how are we going to increase? Say. You know, how are you spending on capital? We're prioritizing. I said we're reinvesting in our future. We're prioritizing our facilities and our classrooms <coughs> without saying we need to go out and get more money and bond more or build some big mothership or anything like that. Now you're saying that capacity, I'm saying basically inside all budget, of this, there is capacity. more than enough to move forward and do right by the kids of this district. And that was that was the point. So maybe. Looking back doesn't help in some people's eyes, but if you don't know where you've been, you surely don't know where you're going to go. I'll tell you, I know the suggestion is, I mean, you had to flip through six pages. I mean, first of all, I just need to flip through six pages of tons of lines. The school budget for Morris across the street, it ought to fit on two pieces of paper. Oh. I don't understand why it's so complex. So everything that is in red, as I said earlier, is no longer in existence. Just everything it. now, is we're streamlining for that exact reason. Because complexity, because be complexity hit things, and our goal is not to hide things. You just had to flip through six pages. So what? Thing. Thank you. Okay. Contracted services staff. Budget this year at eighteen eight. We came in at sixteen eight. We expect to be at twelve next year. Biggest difference on para educators. We'll also be flexible here. We're also reviewing our contract with at advance. Why? Because the way it's written is we pay actual benefit costs plus 10%. While well, it was designed and a good idea to be flexible, the long term is actually not saving us money. So this will continue to adjust. Reduction of 6.8 contractual positions against last year. One area we're reviewing is looking with the contractual position to share office and nurse position at Warren. I was not popular last night. They asked me to reconsider it. I promised I will look at it and reconsider it. But I also pointed out this fact. We have one nurse at Wamogo with assistance of an LPN as needed for 520 students. I have one nurse at Warren for 55 K through 8. And if you want to say pre-K in there, 16. Six. I have one secretary at Morris, one secretary at Goshen, and one secretary at Warren. Some of this is about, again, how we are designed and what we can continue to do. We'll look at it, but we have to look at shared positions. Somebody asked last night, I'm going to repeat the question because I'll just save the question later. Well, if you're looking at shared positions, can't we look at shared administrative teaching positions? Not that simple because of bargaining unit contracts. This person pointed out, well, once, once upon a time we had a shared teaching <coughs> administrator. It doesn't happen anymore. We've already locked in positions with contracts. And the impact is actually not on a school, but winds up impacting an ag classroom after we've moved six other people across three different buildings. 
So I just want to put that in perspective when you look at what we can do and what we can't do under our current constraints. So everybody has bargaining unit and seniority rights, and you have to respect those or you will pay them to stay home and they will come back. That's the way the process works. People have asked it everywhere. I wanted to at least address it. Inclusion of contractual position benefits into the line items. Just being more transparent, more thorough. Consolidation of accounts, moving funds to schools, accountability at the school level, spending at the school level. Per pupil allocations for school for supplies and professional development. And then the last piece of this, which I didn't get to because we weren't going through too many lines at a time, uh, creation of an enrichment program to replace TAG. TAG is talented and gifted. Took a visit to a school. There were three students sitting in the classroom with a the teacher. There were not three students, and this was not warned, so anybody doesn't have to think it's going on a small school conversation. Where are the rest of the students? They're at TAG. What have we told the two boys and the one girl now sitting <coughs> in the classroom? You are not talented and you are not gifted. That is a terrible message, you're right. And as a parent, not even as an educator, I can't do that. We're too small to do that to our own kids and set them up for failure down the road or perceived failure down the road or anything. We will not do it anymore. What we will do is we will offer after school enrichment grades three through eight for all students. We will take the TAG funds and other funds and put those funds into after school programming for our youth and enrich their lives. But we will not say, you get a special program. We have to identify kids. We do not have to program and pull them out of class and then leave the kids behind feeling like, mm, I'm not one of them. Administration. Consolidation continued here, professional development, travel accounts we weren't utilizing, legal fee accounts, multiple ones, internet service accounts. We had how many internet service accounts in this former budget? Five. We only have one internet service, but we had five different accounts. And accounts to match actual need and spending. This is the account, this is the one you spend it against. Do what you're supposed to do. Operations and maintenance. There's potential savings still here. We're moving forward, working hard, trying to get solar at both Wamogo and James Morris. This is $40,000 of savings that we can realize that is not included at this point. Why? Because the fields aren't up yet. But once they go, we're good. Oil, we projected a 10% increase when this budget was done. Oil prices keep dropping a little bit. We'll have a little savings here as well. We are reducing capital repairs at Wamogo because we are shipping to a greater investment. How many of you remember voting in a referendum last year because the district needed more money for security cameras? You all voted. We didn't pass. It's okay. We've approved it. We're doing it at Wamogo, and we're not asking for additional funds to do it. And they will be put in place during spring break. They will be installed. 45 cameras at the high school internally, nine external cameras during spring break without asking for more, just realizing what we have. So movement of new security equipment to the capital needs list. Capital and debt to the question before. Last, last fiscal year was proposed 75000 to go to capital, never got there. This year, we didn't have a line item for capital. We were going to put a quarter of a million dollars into capital before the end of this year. We're going to put $500,000, if we keep doing it, every single year for the next five years. And at a minimum, we'll have 2.75 in contributions over that time period. Well, how are we going to sustain that? Because our debt's going down. How is our debt going down? Next year, our debt will be 522. It is the last year of the payment on the property. And the next to last year on the lighting project. From there, in fiscal year 2020, our debt's expected to be at 277 and falls into the $100,000 range. So five years out, for example, we're looking at almost $400,000 of savings in debt alone. So rough number, no. what, what is our debt load right now? What is the district has an outstanding debt? Um, total or percentage of our budget? Total. Total of our budget would be the 550, 
522 for next year, plus 2.4 on the roofing projects. So you owe three million dollars. Roughly three million dollars. And how's that going to get paid off? You said it's a twenty-year. It's a twenty-year note. That'll get paid off. Okay. So that no, won't this be. is this is all. This is a twenty-year note on the two on the two point four. Debt service. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right now, it's of our local contribution of seventeen. You're looking at roughly three percent is debt service. <clears throat> You'll be under 1% in five years. So debt service as a proportion of our budget is shrinking, which is why we can also start to maintain some of these capital investments into our facilities. Is that a capital fund or can we actually it's capital? It's a capital reserve fund, yes. And how much is that fund now? Currently, after the reimbursement on the roofs, it is at $757, and I'm probably going to be off by 1000 either way, but right about there. $757,000. So you had $750,000 in like a cash in a, in a reserve account. Correct. And you got $3 million in debt. Correct. Okay. Goal is not to take on any more debt. <clears throat> Why do we have to start investing in capital? Because it's $1.8 million over the next two years, and we are not talking frivolous things. We're talking smart boards, computers that were not part of a replacement schedule. We're talking kitchens that haven't been replaced or upgraded in 25 years. Boilers, windows over time, floors. Walk across any of our scores, you're going to see floors coming up. These are basic items. Our windows in all of our facilities are 30 plus years. Some of them are really expensive, like a Wamoga, where they're actually full window units. They're not just windows. You gotta take the whole unit out. Heat, circulation, boilers. We blew a boiler last month in Goshen. $25,000. A well pump in Morris, January, February. February. These are things that happen. But if you don't build a reserve, you can't address them. If you don't be proactive with things, they build up over time. So that gives you an idea of why we need to start saving. Because, when you think about it, the little guy in the beginning is going to grow up. The little guy is not. Oh, I forgot I missed the slide. Hold on. Um, greater investment in capital projects, continued reduction in debt service. People have said in many of these trips, well, who's going to make the decision on what's our priorities? It will be done in public at the facilities committee. We will determine and prioritize our capital needs. Board of Education will approve those priorities for next year in June. Not going to be the decision of the person running. We'll make recommendations, but it'll be a group decision with feedback that'll be shared. And why? Because the little guy in the beginning, as I was about to say, grows up and becomes really old real soon. Does not become a girl, though. We <laughs> I will happily take questions at this time on anything and everything on your minds. I said, so I gotta say one thing. I did it last time. It was good luck. I gotta say hello to our friends in Florida who were taping for us. So. Okay, we're good. Even though the budget, the school budget, is going to go down, as taxpayers of the towns, we don't see that, correct? Because the state mandates you can't go backwards. Is that how that works? No. So this is the benefit of actually being part of a group. <clears throat> Your contribution in Morris is five hundred thousand dollars lighter less than it was for this year. You're, we're not billing the town of Morris that $500,000. But we still pay the six. So your contribution... 6.7 million was it? No, you, you're, no. no, you're going from... So we do see a reduction. Oh, you, yes. see a, you see okay. Yes. Yes. That was my question. And the, budgets, yes. and the school budget. And the school budget that. next year, you're going from... 6.6 6 to 6.1. You're seeing okay. $500,000. So it can more. go down. Then. I'm confused on how okay. that works. It, so, it so. can the, go down for an individual town. Correct. But the total, total is the less. 17, 17 307. can't go down. So, so, we, can go so down. we can pay less. There's a minimum budget that the, the state can only let it go down. What is the increase? Chris? 
Cool. That's what the article said in the cool. paper over the weekend. Those districts sure. that, that cool. were getting invited to the state was, I mean, so if you got a budget of 17 million this year, you can go down 3% this year. You can go down 3% next year. There's a minimum that the state will only allow a school district to go down. Otherwise, the state takes action against Correct. it. Correct. Right. Correct. So the budget can go down. You could probably try to argue that. I haven't seen it. No, in, I'm just saying. I, mean, I haven't seen state. it in a yeah. sense of a regional district um, because, again, it's a little bit different in yeah. funding formula. Um, I would also say to that, when you look at what's being reinvested in our facilities in this time, you know, it's well, above. I'm not arguing. It's, that. It's, I'm it's, just arguing no, with the budget. No, overall. it's above three. I mean, we're literally. We're literally putting 3% almost back into our schools. No, I'm just answering the question yeah. for the gentleman. Yeah. The budget can go down if you really want yeah. to go and down. And then of that, you would proportion it out so it may not be 3%. It's going to be right. proportioned accordingly. Right. <laughs> okay. So um, I first want to say thank you that you put light on everything and you were honest about this. And as someone who the last time you came here, I was going to bite your head off. Um, you did, but it's okay. And you, when, when did you start? <coughs> Officially here? Yeah. July 3rd. It was a long weekend. Okay. So in, in this, this first six months of school, you went through the entire budget, found things, and are honestly have things in the line items. And that's, that's great for someone who's paying, that we're, we're paying all these taxes. You are the major part of the reason of our taxes going up. So it's great to see this. Alicia, so. Alicia and Tommy couldn't afford me this back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and to that, it's not just the superintendent, right? It is board members who come to committees and raise questions and ask questions and focus on long-term planning, which is actually one of the tenants of the 70 charter for this region. It's administrators willing to look at it and say, okay, some of this is out of whack. It's people saying, what do we value more? Um, going to a conference or, I don't know, maybe putting a new stove in one of our cafeterias. And I'm just using different examples. It's remediating, you know, tiles that we need to remediate because they have asbestos underneath them from the 60s? Or is it, you know, we need some big shiny consultant to come in to tell us how they're going to save the day? But, I mean, that's what it comes down to. And it's having a team of people around you and a board that actually believes in, okay, these are our kids. And if you get to meet our kids and you get to see the work that some of our kids are doing, the band in Infinity Hall on Sunday, for those who got to go. The basketball. basketball team I knew that brought communities from across this whole. And to see almost 2,000 people dressed in red um, at Mohegan Sun from all different walks of life, three different communities plus the other seven that we serve. That's community. To have students who are winning national awards um, in arts. I would embarrass the first selection, but I will not. Right now. Um, but I mean, there, there's there's a lot of great things happening, right? And that's why you do this. You don't do it to say, you know, I need a professional development trip to someplace, or I need this special consultant to come in. Why are we putting cameras in schools? The only place I've ever been that we're 100% blind 100% of the time. And if that brings a little bit more sense of security along with reinforced doors that we put in and reinforced door jams, then I feel good about my children going in. I made no secret. I got a fifth grader right down the road. He wants one thing and only one thing in ninth grade. He wants to be a warrior. All right. So that's why we're doing it. So I appreciate it. But these are our kids, too. And that's why it matters. Uh, since you brought up the issue about uh, safety and security, yep. um, I believe it was maybe what, a year and a half ago or so, it was on the front page about one of those. Um, Director of Safety and Security, uh, so former uh, just state, state trooper, yep. but he was not allowed to have, um, he wasn't allowed to be armed. And that, uh, 
bothered me terribly uh, knowing that um, not only the fact that he was the only one for four schools, which unless he can clone himself, that's you know, not protecting all those children, but uh, especially in light of what's going on nowadays, and then the fact that this was broadcast on the front page of the paper, um, you know, that our uh, director of safety and security is unarmed. I mean, if somebody should break into the, uh, the school, what's he supposed to do? Um, you know, try to punch the guy while the guy's got uh, so, you know, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I, let me walk this back a little bit. <coughs> For those of you that don't know that this came up this summer, the question of arming a director of security probably will come up again as we move through the spring or arming anybody or how we handle that. Mm -hmm. We have four facilities. The odds of a director of security being in any one of those facilities if somebody breaks in, small. Not the reality. Everybody knows we have one. Couple that with our location, our proximity to state barracks. The response time, which, having been around, we need to call them for different things, pretty good. We also fall under two different troops. If you're in Goshen, you're in Troop B. If you're in more and more Goshen, or Litchfield, you're in Troop L. Interesting, because that comes up occasionally when we have to work with different areas. Utilization of the Litchfield constables as well. How can we start to share some of these resources? And, and I will say, you know, I've been in urban centers, I've been in suburban districts. I could put an armed officer right there right now, and you're never going to be 100% safe. I said this last night as well. So it's not about just arming somebody, it's about a lot of the other programs and pieces while having somebody with a weapon may, may, feel, may make some feel safe, it also increases liability and exposure on the other side. God forbid that weapon is lost, dropped, discharged, whatever. We carry that liability as a district. Different feeling. There are reactions to people seeing a weapon that differ from child to child, student to student, teacher to teacher, adult to adult. So there's a lot that goes into this conversation. At the same time, it's also how we find out information. It was well publicized, you know, and well discussed. That we had student made correct back in December. Where that information come from? Parents and students who build trust with an administrator, the administrator to bring forward information. We've had multiple cases this year where students have come forward to help out other students and share information that have prevented students from self-harm. When you look at most of these tragedies, it's not having those relationships, it's not having the courage to come forward, and it's, not, it's about not, you know, people not being young.